everyone and welcome back. To start this video off, you can see that I am centering the clay here. I'm using a technique where I center the top half of the clay before I center the bottom half and it just makes larger um, amounts of clay easier to manage. You guys, this video has been a long time in the making. I was looking back at the footage that we're watching right now and the timestamp is from April. Now, part of that's because I'm going to be underglazing the finished piece and it takes longer uh, at the studio that I use to get low fire pottery back than to get high fire back. And when you underglaze, it has to be low fired unless you're okay with some of the pigment, um, well, the intensity of the pigments being reduced. So for this pot, what I'm doing is creating a shallow bowl or a plate that has a shallow bowl shape to it. Um, this was a new technique at the time I was doing it. I've made a few more since then. I really enjoy this shape. It just, it's very nice to make on the wheel. It's very fulfilling. Um, and when you turn it over to trim it, it just, it's so nice. I don't know. It, it just feels right. And when it's finished, it's nice to hold, you know? One thing you have to be uh, aware of or careful of as you're making a pot that is for food or for drinking out of, you want to make sure that the lip has a nice soft edge. You don't want it to be sharp, especially if it's a mug or a cup. Because when people go to drink out of it, you don't want them to feel like they're going to cut your lip. Cut their lip. <laughs> you don't want them to feel like they're going to cut their lip on your, on your mug. Uh, and then on a plate, it's just nice. You don't want to handle a plate that, that feels like it might cut you. <laughs> yeah, that seems like common sense. But when you're in the process of making it, sometimes it's easy to forget. So here I'm using this really cool tool. It is a bat with foam on it. And you can lay a low, um, more flat pieces on the foam so you don't have to use clay wads or any sort of method of sticking the pot to the wheel. It just kind of is held on by the foam by sinking into it a little bit. And so it's really nice when you're trimming the foot on a plate or something that is very shallow. You may notice that when I cut the plate off the bat, it still has a lot of clay, extra clay underneath. And when I'm trimming it, there's you can see that the plate almost feels like it has a square bottom at first. But I end up trimming all that back so that it, the inside curve matches the outside curve. Okay, now we get into the good part. Not that the other parts weren't good. This plate, I decided I wanted to do a drawing on it and I was looking up different birds because I wanted to put a bird on it. And of course, hummingbirds are my favorite, so it had to be a hummingbird. And I got some ideas from different tattoos because those are very good on focusing on shape and line elements. And I knew I wouldn't be able to get like a realistic hummingbird. I drew a lot of inspiration from tattoo designs, but I didn't copy one design. I wanted to really have my own design. I just looked at several different ones to see what kind of elements people focused on to see what things other artists emphasized in their drawings before I started my own. At first I was just looking at drawings, but they focused too much on shading. So I ended up looking at tattoos to really get my idea to get that more graphic nature into the drawing. It was really fun to draw all the feathers and to put all the details in. Um, probably the hardest part of this drawing was making sure both the birds looked the same. And there are some small differences, but I think I did pretty well making them practically identical. And so now you can see I've started underglazing. As I was making this video, I was thinking about, you know, I want to make sure that 
this part of the video is interesting. So when you're underglazing, you have to do three coats of underglaze so that you have enough um, color on the surface and so it's not translucent. But that doesn't make a very interesting video. So I was like, okay, first I'm gonna paint all the colors for my video and then I'm gonna turn off the camera and paint the other two coats. So that was interesting to think about, but it helped me plan out the colors and not, you know, spend a lot of time thinking too hard about what colors to use. It just kind of went with my first instinct and I think that turned out really well. I was concerned about what I would do with the background and debated a lot whether I wanted to paint it with underglazes or not. In the end, I decided not to underglaze the background, but to use a low fire glaze. I really wanted to make the hummingbirds bright colors, and I went off of the idea of a ruby-throated hummingbird, because those are the ones that I'm familiar with. They're the ones that I used to watch in my backyard. I would get up in the morning before school and eat my cereal and watch the hummingbirds eat their breakfast. And having these hummingbirds drawing them was just very nostalgic for me. I wanted to paint them in a way that reminded me of a ruby-throated hummingbird, but I also, you know, took creative license and added the flower to the belly that was more bright colors. Another thing I had to think about while painting this was that I knew I was going to paint a glaze over it, um, after painting the underglaze and firing it. So I wanted to make sure that the lines that I drew into the clay that I could get glaze down into those lines to create a dark outline around the colors so that there would be better contrast and the colors would feel brighter. Uh, so I was very careful not to get underglaze down in those lines which was definitely harder on the second and third coats, especially on the wings, the little feathers, they each have a line going down them, and that was probably the hardest. Now, one thing I didn't film was the actual glazing, and I, I forgot to film it. Sorry! So, you get all this great footage of underglazing, but you didn't get to see me regular glazing. Oh well. After underglazing, I fired the pot again so that the underglaze would be permanent, and then when I regular glazed it, um, that prevented that glaze, the underglaze, from running. So I was able to just paint the glaze completely over the birds and then wipe it back with a sponge. I glazed the background a light brown, and I used a clear glaze over the hummingbirds themselves. It was the first time I had used that glaze on an actual pot. I had tested it before, knew it was the color I liked, but I had only put it on a test piece. So it was really nice to get it back and it looked the way that I had expected or wanted it to. There's Vincent! Look at him wagging his tail at me. Getting close to the end of the underglazing, the last couple of parts I hadn't made up my mind how to color them and so it, it took me a minute to figure out what I wanted to do but I was like, there's only a little bit of blue, I should just add a little bit more. that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember if you like this video to hit that like button and of course if you want to see more hit that subscribe button. Alright, I'll see you later.